Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for your patience. My name is Dominic, or Dom, if you prefer. Oh, man, I look unusual online. So, uh, you know, thank you very much for bearing with me. We uh, worked with our IT staff, and our IT staff really nailed it. Thank you, Jason, for holding down the fort, everybody in the London office. And uh, here we are, everybody. Welcome to Manchester. I uh, keep looking outside because the light in Manchester is actually uh, kind of going in and out from the uh, from my window. But um, again, everybody, welcome. My name is Dominic. I am your Manchester program manager, and uh, I will be taking you on this journey uh, along with our emissions team and all of our staff around the uh, around the world, frankly, to uh, get you uh, to Manchester to complete your internship. Um, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes, let everybody join. Again, thank you all for your, uh, for your patience and understanding. Uh, apparently, Facebook makes it easier, to, and rightfully so, to, uh, to go live on your mobile device as compared to your, uh, to your uh, laptop. So uh, I learned something very valuable today. So thank you again. Um, but uh, yeah. Wait in a couple more minutes, everybody. Thank you very much for being here with us in Manchester. Uh, how can I describe myself really briefly for you? Dominic Palazzolo. Uh, I am an Italian and an American uh, working for an Asian company that has offices in China, Sydney, London, San Francisco, Philly, and why we're here in Manchester. I'm um, going to run through kind of a quick agenda for everybody here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know, what you're going to get on this, uh, on this experience, uh, why it's going to benefit you, uh, an international internship that is, what to expect from our host companies, what to expect from the entire process, from communicating with our admission staff around the, around the world, to applying for our program, to the visa process if it's required, to... Uh, the interview, and so on. But um, why we're really here, though, is to talk about Manchester itself. Um, you know, uh, people always ask me, what is, uh, you know, what is the benefit to doing an internship in Manchester? And uh, as you guys keep bringing in questions, I will do my best to answer them. So uh, what's the greatest opportunity for interning in Manchester? Um, I can give you the old, you know, real world hands-on experience, and that's true. That is true. Um, but uh, what you're going to get from it is uh, a one-on-one -on -one experience uh, with your manager, which oftentimes when you're doing internships isn't necessarily happening. You're, uh, you know, if you're in you know, other locations where there are more hustle and bustle, New York City, London, those kinds of places, uh, you're going to very infrequently get the opportunity to... Uh, you know, to collaborate one-on-one -on -one with your manager while getting that oversight. Uh, but in our program, because Manchester isn't, uh, isn't as quick and as crowded and as hustle, as hustle and bustle as some of these larger cities, um, we are uh, going to get the opportunity to work closely, not only with your managers, but with your teams on the ground. Um, I see a couple questions coming in about, uh, about the cost of the program. We're going to talk about that here shortly. Um, so we talk about, uh, you know, the real world hands-on experience, but what I like about Manchester specifically is that it's a manageable city. Now, what does that mean? Uh, manageable, manageable in the sense that, uh, public transportation is just very, very quick. You can walk from one end of the city to the other as well. Um, you can jump on a train and be out into, uh, be out into the mountains, uh, be out into the sea. I mean, it's just a very accessible city. And so I like that about Manchester in general. Uh, it's not overcrowded, not overpopulated with, uh, uh, from a tourist side, but also from a, a business day-to-day, nine-to-five side as well. So Manchester, to me, is a very manageable city. Um, I like to use the London versus Manchester uh, example as well, right? So um, why do I like going to Manchester as compared to uh, a London program? Um, first off, it's you're not suffocated. You know, when you get on public transportation, you don't feel like a like a sardine. And I've been in I've been in London during rush hour, and it is uh, if you're even the slightest bit claustrophobic, uh, you won't get that in Manchester. Manchester is uh, uh, just from a population sense less crowded. Uh, it's affordable. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it's 
easily half the price of going on a program or living in London in general. Now, I got a question here is, you know, uh, why, you know, talk about CRCC's, uh, you know, you know, why does it, you know, why does it cost what it does? Um, frankly, I mean, you can usually assume that on the program, uh, the, as far as the cost goes, at least half the cost is going to be your accommodations. Now, when you talk about going on a London program for the same period of time and other, with other organizations too, you're going to find that this price is doubled, if not tripled, just from an accommodation standpoint in cities like London and Dublin and Edinburgh. So Manchester is incredibly affordable, which is another point of what do you get out of Manchester? It's affordability. Um, we talked about how the managers have time for you. Um, it is, uh, it's great that the managers will have one-on-one -on -one time with you, always. Um, you want that. You, 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 you want to have their expertise within your field, and you want to feel like you can bounce ideas off of them, and then they'll prepare you to go on meetings, they'll prepare you to go on, uh, uh, you know, go in front of clients, that is, and, and be prepared to, when you leave your internship, to go face uh, the competitive real world. Um, another thing I love about Manchester is that it's young and creative. Um, it's a place that isn't on everyone's radar. Uh, we talked about affordability, but it's, to me, it's a place that uh, just thrives from creativity. Look at cities like Amsterdam, cities like uh, San Francisco, uh, cities like Berlin and Barcelona. These are young and creative cities, uh, but Manchester isn't. Uh, you know, hasn't been put on that map for some time. So that's an advantage for everybody that uh, when you come to Manchester, you are legitimately starting this new movement of internships and apprenticeships in Manchester. Um, and that I'm going to cover that here about how host companies are responding to uh, bringing on CRCC Asia's uh, interns. So um, let me talk about uh, let me talk about these host companies. Um, so these host companies are uh, we're covering the full docket of internships. We have our sectors that are listed on our, on our website, um, but we're able to work with these host companies that are going to allow us to work within multiple sectors within their organization. Um, you know, for instance, uh, working with a design firm, uh, spe specifically with an interior design, um, but they go around and do commercial and education design uh, for schools and for corporate businesses, for banks and for city councils. And um, was talking to their finance director actually last week and their director of HR. And we're going to be able to work with not only their interior design, but also their finance and accounting sectors within their business and operations sectors. Um, so, I mean, we have this uh, many sectors within this one firm. So uh, you'll, you could possibly be working with, uh, with one of uh, CRCC Asia's other interns, but just maybe within the same company, but maybe in a different sector. So I think there's a benefit for that as well. Uh, on the finance and accounting side, we're working with a, uh, a commercial investment uh, organization that uh, will be able to work within the finance and accounting sector there, but also within the marketing sector there as well. And... Um, you know, there'll be some commercial risk assessment as well. So, I mean, those that are into risk in, and investments and in commercial properties, I mean, this is a great opportunity for you from a finance and accounting side to get next to the director of finance, to the managers and to the team on the ground and uh, really uh, get, your, get your hands dirty, as I like to put it. Get your, you know, roll up the sleeves and get your, uh, you know, get down to business with them and, uh, um Working with NGOs from refugees to civil rights to uh, nuclear disarmament to women's rights movements to underserved populations movements. I mean, it's really, uh, really exciting from the NGO side as well and the nonprofit side that we have so many organizations to work with, but we also have many sectors within the nonprofits and NGOs to work with as well. So um, this is why I like Manchester because uh, another, another cities around the world, if you're working in finance and accounting within a, within a multinational, you're going to work only within the finance and accounting department. But here, yes, you'll be doing a finance internship or an accounting internship, but you'll be exposed to the risk side, the marketing side. It's more of a tight-knit group here in Manchester, which I truly appreciate. Um, we also have opportunities for our STEM students, uh, specifically within the engineering field. 
Uh, we are working with a, uh, a large uh, civil engineering organization that has uh, that touches other uh, other engineering uh, sectors as well, civil engineering, electrical engineering, and bioengineering as well. So I'm starting to get some questions in here. So before I continue, I'm on my I'm on my mobile device here, so I'm going to go through and answer. Tim, good question here. Uh, would an internship in Manchester present as many global opportunities as London? What is the work culture like, and the with with our internship partners? So Tim, specifically, uh, when I look at it like this, when you're going to uh, an interview, for instance, um, you know they're looking at your work experience. You no longer just need academic, international academic experience. You need international work experience. Um, so when you're sitting in front of a hiring manager and there's two candidates, um, they're looking at that experience. Now, one can assume in London you're going to have the cultural experience uh, of being in a city like London. But they'll ask you the question, what kind of solid work experience do you have? Um, and for my money, in Manchester, the opportunity and exposure to not only your industry that you're, that you're looking into, but also the, I call it the house. So if you're in a finance and accounting house, you're getting all aspects that go into working within a finance and accounting uh, firm. So for instance, um, you're, you know, they're going to look at your, uh, you know, look at your experience that you got and they're going to assume, I would assume as a hiring manager, you're going, they're going to assume that you had more one-on-one -on -one time with your hiring manager and with your mentor uh, than they would in the London side. That's just that's just the hustle and bustle of London versus the more relaxed, more direct, more time for our interns approach that our, uh, our Manchester host companies have. And frankly, this is something that we negotiate with our Manchester host companies is, you know, don't just sit an intern at a desk and say, go. No, actually, you can't do that, which is required for your certificate of sponsorship and a visa. But uh, they need to have a plan of action for you and they will and they will be working with you to make sure that uh, you're coming up with a plan to give you tools that you can take, frankly, for leverage, right? I mean, you're here working, looking at uh, CV leverage, leverage to beat out the candidate next to you that's going for the same job, but on the other end, salary leverage as well. So there's many advantages, and I think you get that in Manchester from a more personal approach from our hiring managers. Um, and what's the culture like in the uh, in an office? I mean, Manchester is compared to London. I mean, you know, I'm I'm wearing collared shirt and a sweater. This is my uniform, but what you can't see is I have jeans on. Uh, most host companies have that kind of culture. We call it smart casual. Um, so from a dress code uh, standard, it's less formal than London, uh, unless you're in the startup scene. Of course, it's always going to be very casual. Um, but you know. Most of the companies that we're working with are, you know, are kind of have that startup ve startup feel to it. Uh, I was just there this past. Uh, I was just working with a lot of our host companies this past Thursday and Friday, kind of coming up with requirements for our uh, for the culture, and uh, we want to make sure it's very welcoming and very open for you to come in and settle in there. I, I kind of call it the Silicon Valley, San Francisco kind of vibe uh, that you get working there. So, um, hopefully, that answered your question, Tim. Uh, I want to go back to, uh, looks like Sandile. Uh, why is, let's see here, I'm just going through, bear with me here guys, I'm looking at a lot of the questions here, making sure I cover every single person here. Um, so we looked at uh, why is CRCC, a, a, uh, CRCC not available for Africans. It is available for most African nationalities. Um, we actually have a program that makes it uh, even more possible for you to get uh, for, for you to get visas, and we're uh, as, as part of your program, uh, what's included in it, you're, you will receive a certificate of sponsorship uh, from our partners, and which will lead to your Tier Five visa. And we have the ability uh, to run this program to get your CO, your COS certificate of sponsorship, but also to transition you into a Tier Five visa. Now, of course, it just depends on the country that you're coming from, but we're going to work with you to make sure that. Uh, before moving forward in our in our process, that we can uh, not only sponsor you, that we can move forward with your visa, and that we can get you uh, the internship within your sectors. So um, it is available for most African nationalities, but you're going to have to check uh, with our admissions team, and of course they'll confer with me to make sure that uh, you know we can accommodate 
as many uh, as many passports as possible. So I don't see that as an issue. Um, just check with our admissions team. Let me see here. Um, got a question from uh, let's see here, Tony Monte. What is life like for a twenty year old? Um, yeah, you know, so for a 20-year-old, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a university town. Um, I guess London holds that as well, but Manchester specifically is geared toward university students. I mean, it is, you know, going out into the, uh, you know, the Northern Quarter, going to live, you know, live music. I mean, God, Manchester, as far as the music scene, is absolutely smashing, in my opinion, to use, a, to use I guess, a, a British term. Absolutely smashing. Um, I've never had a dull evening going out in central Manchester. Uh, now, it is what you make it, obviously, um, but uh, CRCC Asia is going to be there. Actually, we're gonna be there doing lots of events and activities with you guys to get you exposures, to get you out of your shell, to network with, uh, you know, with not only your uh, internship uh, colleagues, but also how do, you, uh, how do you make best use of your time and networking and building that international network, which is going to give you Letters of recommendation, which is going to give you, uh, you know, all of the leverage that you need to go back to your home countries and apply for that job to get that salary that you want. So, um, yeah, we're going to give you all those tools. Um, going to go down a couple things here. I got a question from Shane Callahan here. Uh, what are IT internships like in Manchester, uh, specifically with an IT and web dev? We're working with. I think we have at the moment. Uh, Five or six, it's actually six web dev firms. I'll give you an example of one right now. Um, they are a, um, depends on what you want, of course. If you want, you know, uh, user experience, if you want uh, network administration, if you want um, uh, graphic design on that side, um, we have the uh, internship for you. Now, uh, Shane, I don't know specifically what it is that, uh, what uh, vertical that you're looking into, but if it's on the, uh, uh, if it's on the uh, you know, design side of things, we're working with, uh, five or six firms right now. I'm looking uh, looking into more, but they are uh, mostly startups. Let's be honest. I mean, and I think that's what uh, I think that's the kind of experience that you want. You know, twenty to thirty full time staff members there uh, working side by side on projects. Specifically, I mean, we're going to talk about new initiatives that these organizations are looking. Our host companies are looking for someone to help drive a new initiative, uh, give their feedback, and then manipulate code. Uh, manipulate servers, manipulate backend to be able to uh, to really kind of impact new initiatives that they have going forward. So from an IT side, uh, I was talking with one of our host companies uh, on Friday, and that's uh, CTI Digital. They were uh, very interested in someone leading a new initiative for them that's going to uh, that's going to essentially connect the multiple departments in their office and create a communications platform. Um, so, so it's going to have kind of the, you know, the user experience side from their staff that's going to be visual, visually appealing, but it's also going to need to be networked um, and uh, all coordinated. And they're looking for our interns to help provide that. So that is going to be an extraordinary uh, internship for someone who gets into there. Let's see. Let's see. Looking at a lot of the questions here. I'm going to kind of go down my list here. Hopefully I'm answering. Keep the questions coming, you guys. Uh, I'm going to drink a little bit of water because... Uh, I don't think I've breathed in the past uh, 20 minutes here. So what can we say? Um, what are host companies' responses to hosting our interns? Um, you know, be risk to say they're all positive, but they are. I mean, uh, one, or actually more than one, about f you know, five or six of the host companies, seven, maybe more than that, I'm getting replies that they're just excited that we're, that we're offering internships in Manchester. I mean, let's be frank, outside of the universities, no organizations are offering internships in Manchester. They're sticking to, you know, the, the big three, you know, you know, London, Edinburgh, and Dublin. But in Manchester, where the affordability is so high and the opportunities are so great, um, we're seeing just an incredible amount of positive feedback from our host companies when, uh, uh, when we come to them saying, hey, you know, we are building this internship program and... Uh, incredibly, incredibly excited. I'm, I'm just uh, thinking about this one host company that we're collaborating with on their official apprenticeship uh, rollout. And uh, they were just saying to themselves, you know, asking themselves, why isn't anyone else doing this? Um, because Manchester itself is just uh, brimming with, uh, with innovation, brimming with youth, brimming with excitement and culture. So 
Um, so again, all very, very positive. Um, you know, I kind of touched on why I think international experience is so important. Um, and I, I like to use the example, uh, just to kind of give you a world, real world example from a, from a hiring manager, a hiring manager myself. Um, when I'm looking at two CVs and if you're living in San Francisco for years, when hiring managers are looking at two CVs and you have, you went to the same university you have the same three internships, but this one over here has one international work experience. This one over here has three domestic. This one has two domestic and one international work experience. This international work experience gets put into that special pot, I call it. And I want to see you as the ever-changing global environment is, is, is taking shape around us with uh, domestic in the U.S. firms and international firms is that there's this extraordinary competition going on, and it's all about international work experience. What exposure have you had to culture? What exposure have you had to multiple cultures within an office? And then, of course, do you have experience to back that up? Uh, and that is going to ultimately get you, going to get you the leverage that you need, right? What are the leverages we're talking about? You're going to beat out the competition next to you as far as, you know, those two CVs go. You're going to be able to le leverage salary, which is always a plus, and for those that are going in the grad school, you're going to be able to use this work experience as leverage to get into competitive grad schools as well. So uh, for me, the investment in doing an internship, an international internship, uh, is, is profound. And I've seen it directly impact my life as well. So i um, got another qu couple questions here. I'm just going to read through them here. Pardon the shine off my forehead here. Let's see here. So I have a question here about um, about uh, if I can read this correctly uh, about uh, scholarships uh, scholarships available. Um, our admissions team is incredibly knowledgeable about uh, the scholarships that are available. Uh, in my experience within internships, international internships, where a lot of universities uh, aren't yet uh, providing financial aid for those programs, is that. Um, is that uh, there are loads of scholarships within your career centers. Uh, so I think a lot of students just forget to apply for scholarships or to go see their career centers or to go see their international offices, even their own departments at their universities. I think it's incredibly wise and it's not used enough to go to these departments at your university because they often have money available that's going unused for internships. Um, and so that can help you fund your program. I mean, I've... I went abroad numerous times throughout my education and uh, just applying for internships, uh, I'm sorry, applying for scholarships funded all of my programs. Uh, great example, I'll just use a great example, um, uh, an Italian-American uh, internship uh, scholarship program that's out there for left-handed Italians and I'm right-handed but as a left-handed Italian that never apply for the scholarships and I, and I got all five scholarships and it funded my entire uh, my entire program in Spain. So go out there and complete your scholarship applications. There are, there's so much money available, so you should be able to afford uh, any program that you really want to go on. So let's see here. Tim, another question from you. Let me see here. Let me see. I'm just reading through the questions. I want to make sure I get that time here. So good question, Tim, when it comes to uh, the specializations as compared to, you know, Mar Manchester compared to San Francisco or Sydney. Um, I look at it from a, if a location has the same opportunities, just digital marketing or, uh, or, or you know, digital marketing, you know, multimedia uh, communications, if they have that, those same opportunities, don't have to mention the same companies that San Francisco's or Sydney have, but if they have the same opportunities and you get more one-on-one -on -one experience with your managers, and you get more, uh, I guess, easier visa processing to get there, and you have more one-on-one -on -one time with your managers, more affordability within a city. It's going to be a benefit for you to go to a place like Manchester because you don't have to deal with the red tape that would be involved in getting to San Francisco or getting to Sydney. Within Manchester specifically, and to get into the UK, of course, this depends on what kind of passport you have, um, and we can talk about that here in a moment. We work with our sponsoring body to make sure that once you have your internship, that you are receiving your certificate of sponsorship 
and you are applying for your Tier 5 visa, and it's done in a very systematic way to get into the UK to complete your internship program. Now, there are specific more, there are different requirements for getting into the US or different requirements to getting into Sydney. But what we are experts on is getting into the UK. And that's my background, is making sure that once you uh, accept the internship, that you are already in the process of completing your certificate of sponsorship process with our partners at BUNAC. And then secondly, you are uh, fully in line and fully ready to apply for your visa. Um, so let me see here, just to make sure. Um, just double checking everywhere. Making sure I'm answering the questions specifically. Again, sorry for the glare off my head. Tim, hopefully I answered your question there. Uh, it looks like it's talking specifically about um, our ties into Manchester office with uh, within two sectors, digital marketing or visa processing. Um, being on the ground in a location uh, where we're hosting our internships is incredibly advantageous because I'm constantly in touch with our host companies and building out our host company network. Uh, so I think that's more specific to what you're talking about. Uh, maybe I misread the visa processing side, but I'm glad I talked about the visa processing side um, so I can give everyone exposure into how the visa processing works. Um, so I can touch on that here briefly, um, but always check with your admissions advisors because uh, they will be communicating with you and communicating with me to make sure that everything is in line for your, uh, for your certificate of sponsorship and for your visa processing that follows that. Let me see here. Um, Shane, good question. What is a list of common items that you should bring when you fly to the host country? Um, specifically to the UK, um, you will, again, you will you work with us and work with our partners at BUNAC to receive your certificate of sponsorship. That's step one. Once all those documents are approved, uh, you will be required to personally apply for your Tier 5 visa. And ourselves and BUNAC will give you the step-by-step -step process on how to do that. Um, the documents that you need to apply for your Tier 5 visa and, of course, your passport should all be made, should all have copies and should all be brought with you on the plane to... Uh, to Manchester. Um, better safe than sorry on my end, but uh, you know we'll walk with you a list of documents that you will need. And it's, it's simply just making copies of the documents you're using to apply for your visa. And, uh, and then you just bring those, those copies with you. And of course, you'll have your passport with your uh, visa in it. And uh, we'll be able to get, you know, welcome you to Manchester and uh, welcome you as you get off the plane. So it's uh, it's not a very difficult, uh, you know, difficult process, and it's but it's very systematic. And so uh, you're making sure that you get your uh, get everything sent to your admissions team to make sure that we can upload it to our uh, to our BUNEC portal to make sure you're on your way to getting your sponsorship. So let me see here. Um, just making sure I'm going through all the questions here. That's a very good question, Nirmalia. Uh, hopefully I said your name correctly. Uh, people always get my name wrong. So um, so if you are studying on a student visa in a country other than your home country, will you still be able to eligible to apply for an internship? The answer to that is yes. Um, if you have a visa in your passport to study from you know within the country you're in, which is different than your home country, you will be applying for your uh, Tier 5 visa to enter the UK in that country. So, for example, uh, if you are students, uh, if you are from, uh, use an example, if you are from uh, Brazil and you're studying in uh, in Italy, you will be even though you have a Brazilian passport, you will be applying for your Tier Five visa in Italy because you already have a visa uh, in your passport that will allow you know that allows you to be in that country. It allows you to be in Italy, so you'll apply for your Tier 5 visa that way. Um, does that make sense? And that's, that's even during your semester break. So you'll effectively have two passports in your, or two visas in your book, one for your studies and one for your entry into the UK. So hopefully that answered your question. Let's see. What else? What else? Uh, what else can interns expect from, from your time in Manchester? So uh, a big question that's always asked is about accommodations. Uh, we are partnering with a, uh, a local student uh, student accommodations provider, um, and we will be uh, access to everything. I mean, these are if I would have had a, <laughs> accommodations like this when I was in university. This is 15 years ago. 
if I would have had accommodations like this, I would have found it hard to leave. Uh, so your own room, king size bed, ensuite, uh, kitchen packs, you know, your, your kitchen, your, uh, uh, Access to secure entry, smack dab in the middle of the city, um, quick routes to public transportation. Um, I mean, you are legitimately <laughs> in the Rolls Royce of, of student living. And uh, I'm just excited that we're able to provide that kind of partnership. Uh, your mission staff will, will, will be able to get you all, all more of that information. But uh, it is very exciting for us to be able to, to partner with our accommodation partners. Um, in Manchester. Um, talking about events, one of the biggest events that we're involved in uh, that I hold special to me is we'll be working with the uh, National, National Refugee Week in Manchester uh, as part of our charity uh, charity activities. So we feel very strongly about making sure we're uh, active in our community and these charity events, which you'll be able to use on your CV, by the way, so there is that kind of benefit there. But um, we'll be able to work with the National uh, Refugee Week and really, I I'm excited about it, have a great impact on helping those from diverse backgrounds uh, you know, integrate and be welcomed and really celebrate diversity. So um, that's exciting for me and that's going to be, it's going to include everybody. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's talk about events you'll be taking, I'm sorry, business seminars. So as part of our offering, you'll be working within business seminars as well. One that I'm very excited about is making sure that you are uh, taking advantage of your time on the ground. So we're bringing in a networking specialist uh, to come in during your orientation to really show you best practices on how to network, not only with your peers, those that are on the program with you and those that will be living kind of within your accommodations as well, but... Um, what do you do when you go to your host company and how do you make those contacts and how do you ask for letters of recommendation? How do you go to these events and make sure that you are creating a broader network so that when you come back to your host country and you're completing your CV and you're uh, completing, completing letters of recommendation to send to your potential employers that you have this broad base of recommendation and leverage. I always use that word leverage to be able to, uh, to, to beat the competition, to have the leverage you need. And so we're bringing in someone as part of our business seminars to make sure that you know precisely how to uh, utilize your time on the ground to build your network, to get that leverage you need. Um, other activities include a uh, tour of the BBC headquarters. Um, for all those uh, Man U fans, sorry City fans, we'll be uh, doing a tour of Old Trafford. So that's exciting as a, as a football fan. Now, I'm not a Man U or a City fan, uh, but still, whenever you get a chance to go to the cathedral of, uh, uh, of football in these cities, uh, it's, it's quite exciting, actually, to get on the pitch and uh, to see the, the clubhouses and the locker rooms and the grounds themselves. So that's exciting. Uh, what else What else we got here? Shane, another question. Let me see here. So this company... Very good question. So when you arrive to the host country, what's going to take place? So myself and some other team members will be at the airport waiting for you. So we'll collect all of your flight information ahead of time. And we'll be waiting for you to essentially welcome you to Manchester at the airport. And then we will be transferring you to your accommodations where we'll be checking you in, getting everything you need to your accommodations, uh, making sure you get your key, your bedding packs, your kitchen packs, uh, making sure that it's a very nice, smooth integration into, uh, into UK life. So uh, it's much, much more glamorous, in my opinion, than the, your check-in day to the dorms your first year of university. So, uh, and we, we work very, very hard at making sure that uh, you are, when you safely arrive, that you are safely transported to your, uh, your accommodations um, and that you have an abundance of staff members that are just there welcoming you. So... Um, yeah, Shane, it's uh, absolutely a uh, a seamless transition once you get you know once the minute you get onto your plane to the minute you get off and in our and you're in our arms. So, what else, guys? Um, let's talk about the application deadlines, guys. Applications are still open. Um, it might seem like that our application deadlines are a lot sooner than our China programs, and that's done for a reason because we need to process your. Certificate of Sponsorships and Visas. We want to make sure we have plenty of time to do that. So what does that mean? 
Uh, March 6th is your first deadline for the June, 5th, June 15th start dates. March 20 is your second deadline for the second cohort, which is June 29 for that start date. Be sure you're communicating with our admissions team. Be sure you're going to crccasia.com to uh, apply for our programs. And, uh, you know, we, we, we say it, you know, it's not just a tagline. We say it. There's limited availability. Uh, the, the programs themselves are filling up and, uh, I can't wait to get you guys in front of host companies. So for all the applicants out there that have applied, make sure your CVs are getting, uh, are, are really getting critiqued and make sure that they're getting to us, uh, you know, how we need them to be, to present you to host companies. Uh, make sure that you're getting all your documents to your admission staff as well. Um, and, uh, you know, let's, uh, you know, let us help you get on, get to the ground here in Manchester. So uh, I'm going to be here uh, for the next uh, next few minutes, taking any more questions that you guys have, uh, thinking about getting an oxygen tank to be able to uh, to breathe here. My gosh, I don't think I've – I'm a talker, but I don't think I've talked like this in years. <laughs> so a little sip of water here. Another question coming in. All right, it's exciting. Haven't done anything foolish to go viral yet, but maybe being late was viral. Um during the internships, are we allowed to take up part-time jobs within the locality to cover expenses? No, absolutely not. This is a requirement uh, set forth within your visa. So when, if you require a Tier 5 uh, government, ex uh, government exchange visa, um, you, will be, um, you will be required to uh, have a supernumerary position. So you will not be allowed to take a paid job. So... Uh, that being said, um, yeah, that's just that's the reality of it. You're there to work, uh, and uh, I don't think you'll have enough time. To be quite honest with you, you'll be working you know 40 hours a week on an internship, gaining that valuable experience. So uh, 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 you know, try to offset your cost before you come here. Scholarship, scholarship, scholarship. There are so many scholarships out there. You guys apply for scholarships. Google search uh, international internship scholarships. There are so many. Go to your College departments, your college of finance, uh, your, your finance department. Go to your uh, international office. Go to your uh, go to your local cities and councils. Go, go, go! Get out there. There's so much money available out there uh, for you guys. So please, you know, talk with your missions team as well. Your missions advisors. They have so many links for you to apply for scholarships. Just get out there and uh, and apply. So, any other questions, you guys? Some staff coming in here. Um, yeah, say hi to the staff. I don't know if you can see them or not, but um, yeah. What else, you guys? Any other questions? We're uh, coming up with about five minutes left. And also, I'll be hanging out here for five minutes. What else can I answer? I'm going to get some water. Maybe I should turn some 90s hip hop on in the background. That's kind of my, kind of my thing. Um, so we talked about application deadlines, March 6th and March 20th for the first and second cohorts, um, crccasia.com, apply, get those applications in, spots are filling up, I can't stress that enough, our admissions team on a daily basis is sending me applications uh, that are coming through, so make sure that you are uh, they're getting those applications in, all the sector guides are online, uh, finance accounting, web, web dev, IT, um, engineering, uh, what else? I'm going through the list in my head. Business, operations, um, what else, what else, what else? Olga, good question. Check out the website uh, for our locations in China. Um, if you are in China and going on our program, uh, we'll be able to work with the admissions team to make sure we give you the correct admission staff member based on your location. But uh, we're talking about Manchester right now, which I know is kind of a... Uh, 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 you know, exciting for us that we are uh, an Asian-based company that has uh, these programs that we've been doing in Asia for years, but now we're launching our Manchester program, and here I am, uh, an American, also an Italian, living in Manchester, working for an Asian company, and hashtag diversity, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, what else, what else, what else, guys? Um, if you have any questions on our uh, internship sectors, um, host companies, um, be sure to talk to your admissions advisors. Uh, they are loaded with information and uh, 
I am on a daily basis in contact with our admissions team as well, making sure that uh, we're giving you the best advantages and the most uh, information that we can. But um, yeah, guys, March 6, March 20 are our deadlines, crccasia.com. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but kind of wrapping things up here. Um, yeah, you guys, I'll be on here for the next couple minutes. And uh, let's see, let's see. You talked about the affordability of Manchester as compared to the powerhouses like London or Edinburgh. Uh, the personalized one-on-one -on -one time that you can get with your hiring managers. And Manchester is often compared to the Londons of the world. And I've done programs in London. Uh, I've been in charge of programs in Edinburgh and London and Dublin. And to me, there's no comparison to the one-on-one -on -one time that you get, not only with your manager, but within your team that you're working with uh, within your host companies. It's extraordinary how open they are to having that one-on-one -on -one time with you. Uh, making those global friends, building those networks, all advantages for you uh, when going on our programs. So, so we talk about requirements. Um, let's see here. We uh, requirements specifically, uh, frankly, there's an age requirement just, you know, over 18, that's a basic requirement, but making sure that you are enrolled in university for at least one semester and um, that, uh, you know, you go through the application process to make sure you are, uh, you know, that we're working with you and our missions team is working with you to make sure, uh, first of all, that we have the opportunity for you because we want to always make sure we have the opportunity before we proceed. Secondly, making sure that you uh, are ready to, uh, to be presented to our host companies, which is CV, cover letters, um, and making sure that you're ready for a certificate of sponsorship and visa process. So um, it's all very systematic, but it's laid out in a very seamless way so we can uh, make sure that we, we get you abroad. So Ava, hopefully that, uh, Ava or Eva, sorry if I mispronounced it, um, but uh, hopefully that answered your question. Common profile is just, uh, you know, our interns are extraordinarily ambitious. So um, I would imagine if you're applying for an internship program, that uh, the ambition is there, so I won't even go into that. Um, but uh, you're looking for work, you're looking for leverage and work experience, and that's important to you to have that international work experience. So uh, that's the that's the profile we're looking for. Um, so and Olga, yeah. So uh, Olga son was a is an alumni of ours, and um, we're, thank you so much. We're glad that he was very very happy to go on our program, and uh, um, we'd be. We'd be help, you know, happy to welcome him back, happy to welcome you uh, to our program if, if you're enrolled in uni uh, as a common requirement. So, um, yeah. What else, you guys? Uh, about to wrap things up here. Uh, but if you have any more questions, you guys, please, please, please make sure that, uh, make sure that you're asking your admissions advisors any questions that you, can, that you have. If you have any questions for me uh, as well, d.palazzolo at crccasia.com. Um, I'm available for you as well. And uh, I really enjoyed my time here. Uh, again, I haven't breathed in about an hour, so I'm going to have a sip of water. I'm going to toast everybody with water, to not what they do in Manchester. And um, thank you, everybody, for joining me on Facebook Live. Um, and um, yeah, I will be sure to post my email in the comment section as well. And I'll put a link up to our application uh, in the comments section as well so that you all have that information. And we look forward to welcoming you to Manchester, everybody. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Bye.